Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. So I want to talk about 10 books that have been influential in my life for various reasons, whether it's to do with my reading, to do with my writing, just the time they came along. And these are in no particular order, and so I'm just going to jump in and talk about the 10 books. So first off, we have the obvious one, uh, which is Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. So this is what I usually say is my favourite book of all time. The actual story behind how I came across this was that I was off school sick and my grandparents were looking after me and they took a copy of this out of the library and then I read it and then by the time I'd finished reading it I was feeling a little bit better and was going back to school and then I read the second book and then I had to wait forever for the third book to come out. But um, yeah, this is really the book that made me fall in love with reading and is really the reason why I'm sitting here talking to you today. So, yeah, Philip Pullman, Northern Lights. Then we have Billy Purgatory, I Am the Devil Bird by Jesse James Freeman. So this is like an indie novel, uh, I would say middle grade to young adult, somewhere around that range, about a skateboarding badass called Billy Purgatory. There are things like the Sword Witch in there. And it's an indie novel, and the reason why this was so important and influential in my life is that the guy who wrote this, Jesse James Freeman, he was the Vice President of Community Management at Booktrope, which is where I got my first publishing deal. And basically I first came across Booktrope through him, through this book, I picked up some of their other releases, eventually submitted some of my work, and uh, history was made. Here is the cat, he's come to say hello, haven't you, Biggs? Okay, so third up we have The Stand. I don't actually have my copy of it here, so it's alright, because I'm, I'm holding a biggie cat. Oh no, biggie. I'm going to let you go. Don't put your claws out. Thank you, he didn't put his claws out. So yeah, I don't currently have my copy of The Stand with me, but I think it's really the book that opened up my eyes to what's possible with words you know it's such an epic story but in a way that engaged me much more than say Lord of the Rings don't get me wrong I love Lord of the Rings but I, I think just reading the stand I was just having my mind blown constantly throughout it and uh, yeah I mean I had to have a Stephen King novel on this list so it had to be the stand then we have Death on the Nile, a Hercule Poirot story by Agatha Christie this is one of the uh, facsimile editions and again, I have to have an Agatha Christie on here. Death on the Nile is one of the first of her books that I read. But it's also quite important because it's my mum and my uncle's favourite Agatha Christie novel. My mum in particular has always had like a, you know, thing for ancient Egyptian uh, mythology and art and all that kind of stuff. And we were going to visit the uh, pyramids and go on a Nile cruise for her 50th birthday. Uh... And funny story about that, she got her injections and all that stuff done, and I still hadn't had mine done. And then it was cancelled because of unrest in the area, so I actually came out on top there by, by being lazy. But yeah, classic novel, and uh, there's a really good like item-finding computer game of this as well. I love the Egyptian backdrop, I love the murder mystery of it all, and even now like the characters sort of spring off the page. Then we have Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett, and I actually recently did a review of this, which I will link to below. This is one of the Ankh-Morpork City Watch books in the Discworld series. It's not the first one, but it's the first Discworld novel that I ever remember reading. And I just reread this so many times when I was a kid. I've probably read this at least a dozen times by now. I love the fact that it stars Sam, Watt, uh, Sam Vimes and the rest of the City Watch. Like We've got Detritus in here, Angua. Uh, Constable Carrot, who might be a captain by this point, I'm not sure. And again, this is like a murder mystery kind of thing, but with all the fantasy thrown in, we have golems, hence the uh, feet of clay. And all in all, just a cracking read, very humorous, and quintessential Pratchett. And I may be a bit biased because it was one of my first ones, but I still maintain it's one of, one of his best. Okay, then we have Our Man in Havana by Graham Greene. Graham Greene is one of my favourite authors, and it was really hard to pick just one of his books, to be honest. It was between this and The Quiet American for me, just in terms of basically how much I enjoyed them, how many times I've reread them. They're both more of what he would call his entertainment, as opposed to his novels, which are like things like The Power and the Glory, which investigate Christianity and that kind of stuff. In this one, we basically follow uh, Mr. Vermvold, a, a vacuum cleaner, is he a salesman or is a salesman, not a repairman, who's living in Havana and he kind of unwittingly and unwillingly gets recruited by the British Secret Service and this novel follows the hilarious after effects of what happens, including when he starts making things up and just drawing random maps and things like that and like saying random people are double agents and stuff and then it starts to come true. So yeah, definitely a good one to start with if you've never re read Graham Greene before. I apologise if my arm down here is distracting but... There's a little man over here. 
He's still getting lots of strokes. He's okay, next up we have The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. So most of you probably know the story of The Exorcist because of the movie. Uh, the movie's pretty scary. The book is also pretty scary. You know the bit in Friends where Joey's putting uh, The Shining in the freezer because he's scared of it? That was like me with this book. And, uh, you know, it gave me all kind of sorts of crazy nightmares and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but there's also another story with this, which is that... Uh, after William Peter Blatty died, the day after, his son sent me a takedown request because I used a picture of him with my review on my book site. And uh, weirdly, I could then just use a Creative Commons photo that was virtually identical that the son himself had taken because he'd published it on Wikipedia under Creative Commons license. So there was no problem. But it was just like, seems like a weird thing to be doing the day after your dad died, don't, don't you think? Very strange. But yeah, The Exorcist. Uh, I, and I think if you read No Rest for the Wicked by yours truly, you will see a lot of the influence of The Exorcist there. Here we have Haruki Murakami, what I talk about when I talk about running. So this was influential for me. Not in in the, the way that the other ones are in terms of them being you know, these really well-written books that I would like to emulate or that have inspired me, but because this is basically non-fiction about how Murakami took up running in his late 20s, early 30s, when he basically quit his job as the landlord of a pub and decided to try and make it as a writer full-time, and he was smoking like 40 de a day, and he was just getting super unhealthy, especially when he was just sitting behind his desk. So he took up running, and ever since, he's, ra he's ran a marathon each year. And in this book, he kind of shares his philosophy on running and also compares that to his philosophy on writing. And I think it just came about at an important time in my life where, um, you know, I've been thinking about taking care of my body a bit more and stuff. And, and some of the arguments he makes, like, if he wants to be the best writer possible, he needs to live as long as possible, so he needs to live a healthy lifestyle. And it's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're bang on, mate. I agree. <laughs> Okay, here we have George's Marvelous Medicine by Roald Dahl, and so this one I picked because it's one of my favourite Roald Dahl books. When I was a kid, I used to reread this obsessively, and I used to try and make my own versions of George's Marvelous Medicine. At one point, I actually made this mixture that when you sprayed it with deodorant, flames happened. I still have no idea how I did that. I think it was with like bits of chemistry set and then like various bleach and stuff like this. I was a bit crazy as a kid. I never drank it, of course, so there's that. But yeah, I, I thought uh, Dole needed to be represented on this, and what better book to do it that with than with this. And finally, speaking of my youth, we have Attack of the Mutant by R.L. Stein. So the Goosebumps books are really, I guess, what got me into horror. This is one of the ones that stands out the most for me because of, again, the number of times I reread it. I actually remember vividly living in Burton-upon-Trent when I was about 9 or 10. And I had a nightmare about the mass mutant because the thing that with his superpower was that he could turn into any object. So I was sitting there in the dark in my room and I was looking around being like, that shadow looks a bit different. And like, I don't remember that book being there. Maybe it's the mass mutant. So I was freaking out and then my dad started having a nightmare and he like vocalizes in his sleep. So he was in this other room going like, uh, and I'm there like an eight year old kid having panic attack basically because of the mass mutant. But yeah, I mean, R.L. Stein and the Goosebumps series sparked again my, my love for horror, and uh, I still reread Goosebumps books occasionally, even in my my thirties. So yeah, there we have it. Those are ten books that inspired me. I actually shared those for the first time on my Facebook page, so be sure to check the links below to go through to that. It just seemed like a fun thing to do, you know, to get a bit of engagement on there, I guess. But you know, let me know in the comments if you've got any ideas for content that you'd like to see, either on my social media in general or specifically on my BookTube channel. Follow me, all that jazz. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.